My name is Gianni Russo, a.k.a. Carlo, the infamous son-in-law from The Godfather. I'm now known as the Hollywood Godfather, and this is my story. Before all of the wins in my portfolio, I was a little boy diagnosed with polio. Experimenting with cures, I tried every one. Felt everything in my right, but my left was numb. Walking with a limp, like will I ever run? Once again, or is this it? Am I forever done? Living in the hospital was never fun. Some people were cool, but not everyone. You never know who you're lying in a room with So I broke a broomstick in half and let it groove with The concrete in the bathroom floor It had a new tip stash Welcome everybody to Hollywood Godfather Well we're coming back Another show With a friend of mine Last week's show was just so much information. I knew we'd never get it into one. We're going to try to get it into two. But again, my friend Larry Minetti for 50 years, and how many people could say that? And we got to touch on your career and the relationships with Sinatra and everything else. We've, we, we built the foundation of how you got to be where you are and your career, fortunately, which I want our audience knows you from. And with that said, I want to, you know, start over with you and uh, welcome Larry Minetti one more time, please, my guest. Thank you. So happy to be back. I even wore the same red sweater I wore the last time. You know what? We're we're actors. Remembrance of you. It's continuity. That's That's right. We we were raised with it. You never know what we're going to cut. Wardrobe! 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 Where's that red shirt from last week? Yeah, where's the red shirt? <laughs> Nancy, get that red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're right. It was um, it was a fun ride. You had a fun ride. I had a fun ride. Who would ever believe that you and I, two digs, would make it as movie stars, television stars, it's amazing. And I remember Dale Robertson, the cowboy actor, oh, said yeah. to me when I was a young man, son, if you want it bad enough, you will get it. And we wanted it multi, multi bad. I'm still working. <laughs> and, yeah, but it worked. And anybody out there, if you have any dreams or admiration, whether it to be in show business or whatever, just keep trying. Don't give up, and you'll make it. You know the funniest thing? The last sentence in my book, because I wanted to write something inspirational, is, yes, you can. And in exactly with what you're saying, yeah. if you want it, you can do it. You, yeah. We're not limited to anything in this world. you got to fight. Yeah. Nothing yeah. happens in this world no. unless you have a little help or you claw your way. Well, with, with you and Baba Black Sheep, what a launch that was. Yeah, that was a major launch for me. And how long did that show last? That show lasted three years as a series. And then after the show, they liked the camaraderie ship of Robert Conrad and I. So NBC decided uh, to put us in another show. And that crazy Robert Conrad said... I almost fell off my chair. He said, I want to be an ex-boxer that turns detective. And I got a mob friend in New York. His name is Joe Cadillac. And Minetti should play Joe Cadillac. So there, behold, there it went and with Stephen J. Cannell. Wow. It was called The Duke. It was a good show. How long did that show last? That lasted one season. And I went off then and got Magnum PI, which was major, major. Let's talk about that, because I mean that that to me would you you'll be remembered for that for the rest of your life, fortunately. Like I'm remembered for the Godfather. You have that one piece of work that it when which people say, Don't you get annoyed with somebody reminding you of that? How could you be? I mean Yeah, you can't. No. And and your character you is so unique. 
you know, listen, The Godfather, I think, is rated as the number one top movie out there. I mean, I don't know what's better. I've watched all the episodes at least four or five times. And you know, it's interesting, by the time this show airs, March 15th, 2022, we have the 50th anniversary, and it's coming back out with additional scenes with an added like three or four minutes on big screens in theaters. That's because wow. most people didn't never saw it on a big screen. I yeah, mean, I remember all your scenes. Well, yeah, well, when they when they killed you in the car, did that <laughs> did that hurt your feet kicking through the window? Well, you know, again, I never I never knew because I was never an actor. But even, you know, this getting beat up by Jimmy Conn and he chipped my elbow, broke two ribs. But like you're pointing out with this thing, they they had the breakaway glass and they put this glass in. But they only had it scheduled on my feet going out the window. So when they yelled I'm cut. Coming back. Now coming back in, all those little pieces of glass were cutting the back of my leg. And I'm not saying anything because I want to. Oh, complain. I remember. I was wondering. Oh, is but that... why would you say that was a great shot for you? Oh, my God. No. It's still around. I mean. People, yeah, no yeah. people. I, I, I walk down the street now. Hey, Carlo, it's perfect. Yeah, well, oh, I man. remember the other scene with your wife. You know, your uh, picture Connie. wife. Oh, yeah, Connie. When you were a belt, come here, you little dago, BB. Oh yeah. Um, and you were beating her up. Oh my God, that was a great scene. Now they they have embellished that because during censors, then. They, there was a scene which I, I never could figure in the cut because I remember the scene I followed her into the bathroom which is the last thing the audience saw when I kicked the bathroom door in and I said now I'm going to kill you when I got in there I grabbed her by the hair and I was simulating banging her head on the sink Oh! so when she called her mother that's why she was all black and blue oh that's why they took but they, Hayes took it out right <laughs> they're, they're putting it back in now. Oh, my God. Because that violence is not violent anymore in <laughs> movies now, so which is going to be fun. Yeah, I remember them all, you and Pacino. And, oh, my God. That was great. Great. Yeah, great. I never thought they'd kill you, though. Well, you, you know, know? And, and Godfather 3, they brought me in, which I thought was brilliant, talking about Mario Puzo from last week's show. He wrote it, and I thought it made so much sense. Egotistically, I wanted it to be, too. They wrote my son, Santini, that we baptized at the end of Godfather 1. And I had the nerve to name him Santini after me setting him up and getting killed. Yeah. They had me coming during Michael's ceremony and my mother being corny, like running the family with her brother for me to avenge my father's death, which the script read amazing, which makes a lot of sense because I'm I'm one-on-one with him, choking him out because I said I knew you always killed my father and to to this day you won't tell me. And Winona Ryder was supposed to be the, the daughter. She backed out. They brought in Sophia Coppola, which I don't think she did a bad job. Then they wouldn't pay Robert Duvall the same amount of money as Diane Keaton, so they replaced it with George Hamilton. That was, oh, I'm that, not saying anything. No, but I'm saying, but the whole movie, well, we both know George, but the thing is that the whole movie started to fall apart, and what people don't know, Pacino actually tried to pull out, and Paramount said, we'll sue you. And he yeah, went, but would you, bl- I don't blame him. Hello. And I mean, was it a, turned it, into a, they turned a wonderful, wonderful masterpiece into a uh, cartoon. Yeah, unfortunately. But yeah. let's get back to you and Magnum P.I. Because I want myself, you know, I watched the show and we had my um, friend and extended brother-in-law, Pat Bolin, with the Black Orchid. I mean, you guys were running Hawaii. <laughs> Yeah, the black, oh my God. <laughs> we'll talk about that. The black orchid came Hello. from Magnum because I, know. I was doing Magnum with Pat Bowen. We used to tell everybody who Pat Bowen is. Pat Bowen and I 
became friends. We were dating two sisters that we had children with, and Pat Bolin owned the Denver Broncos. And I remember the day, Larry, when he said, I, I'm, I'm buying the Denver Broncos. I said, what are you doing? What are you, crazy? And he was a lumber family out of Canada. He had to become a citizen, and he was paying $17 million. I said, are you nuts? $17 million. When I found out by the time he died just two years ago, it's over a billion dollars, that franchise. Yeah, yeah it uh, paid off. It did pay off. Yeah. And not only that, I remember because we went to Super Bowl twice. And because of Pat, I'm with Pacino at Dantana's one night. I just walked in. And he said, Johnny, come over here, come over here. And he's sitting with Oliver Stone. You know how small the booths are. He said, you got something to do with football. I know you or your family. I said, yeah. I said, my brother owns the Broncos. And they just won Super Bowl. So he says, sit down. He says, we got a script. We'll give you a part and we want you to do it. It's any given Sunday. Can you get Pat Bowling on the phone? I had him on speed dial. So now I'm calling Pat at 9, 930 at night at home. So he said, what are you calling me at home for? I said, I got a guy here who wants to talk to you. Tell him to call me tomorrow morning. I said, I'm not going to be with him tomorrow morning. It happens to be Al Pacino. He said, what? I said, Al Pacino. Al Pacino wants to talk to him. But I got him, I got him on, on the, we could hear it. It was before speakerphone. I said, I'm going to make an introduction right now. Al Pacino, Pat Bowen. They talked for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And the next day, they were, I mean... They were fighting whose jet we were going to get on, Warner Brothers' jet or Pat's going to send his own jet. And uh, he played Mike Shanahan. Nobody knew that's who he characterized himself as in that, in that movie. And that was one of the better movies for me because I had a blast. Six months I was on that down in yeah. Miami. But, uh, but we keep w w going away from your stardom with that show and the character Rick I mean, at uh, Selleck alone, you know, and Selleck keeps working. I mean, I don't know if this guy, I don't know if he get up in the morning without going to makeup, but. Uh, I, you know what? It's, a, yeah, it is. I speak to him at least twice a week. And. Oh, that's great. That's another thing. I want to know you, you're still friendly with him. Yeah, but you know what? When I got Magnum, I was supposed to do Simon and Simon. Oh, wow. And I liked the idea. I liked, you know, the script. And Phil DeGuerre was the exec producer. And Don Belisario calls me and said, Larry, I got a script called Magnum. It's in Hawaii. I said, yeah. And <laughs> he said, and you play this guy who thinks he's Humphrey Bogart. I went, pew, pew. You know, I just thought... Well, there's one thing about you, always very... Vo you voice what you thought. <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking, and play Humphrey Bogart of all the gin joints and all the cities and all the world. Yeah, but you could this do that. Says, you know, everything I work for is going to be over. But then, prior to that, like three weeks, I had done a Rockford two-parter, and Tom Selleck started it. He played Lance White, the perfect detective. Well, we got along marvelously. Oh, that's so cool. So I, I said to Belisario, who's starring in this? He said, a new guy named Tom Selleck. I said, I'm in. I'm in. Why not? That's it. How long did that last for you? That show lasted eight and a half years. Wow. It was number one show for eight years. Oh, my God, yeah. And uh, it was just, you know, classical. No. And we had a lot of fun. Oh, I, I used to hear about it. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that, and I remember who you became a good friend with, obviously, that we were all somehow, we were always thrown together with the Sinatras and the celebrities of the world. But how did you get Sinatra to get on that show? Because he well, wasn't doing television. I'll tell you the story. Uh, we were having dinner in a restaurant. Sinatra, Barbara Sinatra, Tom Selleck and I. And Frank is describing two or three of our shows, this guy. So finally, I leaned over, I grabbed the shoulder, I says, Frank, 
why don't you do the show? He says, Junior, I thought you'd never ask. And that was wow. the end of it. That's and great. I I uh, reached out to Belisario thinking he would write it. But he was such a pompous, you know what? He said, no, I'm not writing a show for Sinatra. I'm busy. So I went back to Frank's house in Palm Springs. We discussed it. And I got another writer. I can't remember. I, anyway, I got another writer. He wrote the script. And he looked at it and said, this is lame. My heart sank. I thought it was over. Then they got Chris Abbott. And she wrote the great script about uh, Sergeant Doheny or Lieutenant Doheny that Frank played. Right. And he loved the script. And uh, that was it. But we had... Good times, and with Frank, <laughs> we had a couple nightmares. Oh my God! Man. Oh, I, I, I do one day, one day. I'm coming out of the um, what do you call it? This the set, and an arrow comes out, and it's Francis, and he said, "Where's that Italian restaurant you guys go to?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "It's called Sergio's." He said, "Get in a limo." We got in a limo and we go to Sergio's. Frank makes me go in there, get the guy out of the kitchen. I said, this is Frank Sinatra. The guy almost dropped dead. Sure. And he made lunch for us. And then I hear these walkie talkies. And the guys, this big Hawaiian guy says, yeah, brother, I found him. And he comes in. Frank goes, what's up? The guy says, we're holding up the whole production for you two idiots. He said, Frank looks at him and says, yeah, well, I was hungry. And the guy on the other end said, well, let him finish lunch. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No. I mean, I, only you and I, I, I mean, I have so many war stories with Frank. As you know, he could change on a dime. I mean, this guy, I mean. I, oh, yeah. There's no, no doubt about no, it. No, and they asked me to write another book, which my book is still, thank God, the book we're talking about is the Hollywood Godfather with Pat Picciarelli, but it's two and a half years, Larry. The book is still a bestseller on Amazon. So they wanted me to write a book. So then they come up with saying, write a book about Sinatra. I said, well, this guy, Tom, uh, Tony O is writing about everybody, right? No, I said, we want you to write a book with your experiences. And, I, and they, they offered me a lot of money. Frank Wyman is my agent and at the literary group and uh, Folio Group, rather. He was literary, literary, then he went to Folio. And they offered me $250,000 advance. And in publishing, that's big today. They don't big, big money. Yeah, yeah. So I started writing it, and I had to stop. And the, the check was already mailed to my agency. Yeah. They, weren't, they weren't going to release it until I turned to, you know, first draft then. And I said, I can't write it. They said, why? I said, I had such a friendship, love-hate friendship through the years. You know, he opened Stage Street for me. He did a lot of things. And then next thing he's throwing you off his plane while it's in the air. The guy's nuts. <laughs> yeah. But Ava, I mean, I, I followed him for years because we had a mutual friend called Grace Kelly. And yeah. every year we'd be at the Red Cross Ball with her, him and her and everybody. And... This one year, I remember, he called me. He's, where are you? I said, I'm in Rome. He said, meet me in London. Are you going to Red Cross Ball? I said, of course. He said, let's go to London for two days. Meet me and come on my plane and come with me. Not realizing Ava Gardner left Spain and moved there. Oh, wow. He was a basket case. Yeah. He, he was in love with Ava Gardner. Oh, my God. I mean, like no end. He was like a little kid on the plane in a fetus position, crying all the way from yeah. London because he wanted to go with him. And she said, I ain't going there with not, not all that bull. And this guy, I mean, I've seen Jekyll and Hyde's in my life, as you and I have with, with some other friends of ours. When they get mean, they get mean. And Frank is not a big guy. I mean, you and I can both you know, grab him and put him in a bear hug and calm him down. He's not Yeah, tough. but then, yeah, but wait a minute. Oh. You can grab him, but you know that old saying, you can run, but you can't hide. He'll oh, find yeah. you. Man. Oh, yeah. No, he'll, I, 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 had, I had really 
strong encounters with him. And, uh, and we, we just time would tell, and then they sat us down. And but you know, because a lot of I always made one thing. Anytime I had problems with mob guys, especially or associates to them, I always made sure I was right. If I was wrong, I'd apologize immediately. I wouldn't even do it. I'd analyze it, and that's why I'm alive. I mean, when you think of all the things I've gone through, the only reason I'm, I'm smart with these people is you have to, you, as you know, you know when to shut up and when to be quiet, but, you know, I'm not going to be abused by him or anybody else if I'm right. And that's why I, I got the decisions every time. But... Uh, Frank, I mean, as many things as bad with him is 200 things that are good with him. I mean, if he likes you, I mean, this guy will do anything for you. And he did. Oh, yeah. Well, Frank had his ups and downs like oh, my God. most people in the world. And of when course. he was down, he was down. And when he was up, he was the king. You know, I wrote a book, too, called Aloha Magnum. And oh, you're in the book, not... Oh, good. And <laughs> everybody, Elvis Presley and Frank and Carol Burnett. And you can get the book, folks, on LarryManetti.com. I'm not doing a commercial on your show. Why not? Please. Yeah. You but can do anything a, you want. Let's say it again, LarryManetti.com. Yeah, you can get my book, Aloha Magnum. It's all the inside, McGilla on Magnum and Selleck and God, everybody. I mean, it, Oh, I it's didn't know this. So, that's good. I mean, that that's yeah, and good. Johnny, to... you're in there all over the place. <laughs> I was so proud. And uh, Frank, there's a story in there. I'll tell you real quick. You'll Please, no. Tell, Frank, a, did, tell a couple of stories from the book so everybody go buy the book. Go right, buy well, it. Frank, Frank uh, did our show, as I said. And in the middle of the show, he has this great big fight scene. And Sinatra had a colostomy bag on because he had an operation oh, wow. two weeks before he did the show. Nobody thought he was going to do it. And he grabs me and says, here, I grabbed the Polaroid camera. When I'm doing the fight scene, you're not on camera. Get on a chair and take pictures. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Like a little nitwit. And Boom, the action, let's go. And there's Frank in this fight scene. I stand in a chair and snap the camera and the flash bomb goes off and then <laughs> cut. So after they yell cut, somebody else, somebody flashed the bulb. A camera, not me, B camera, C camera. And they're looking at me and the goddamn, excuse me, the, the picture is coming out of the Polaroid. <laughs> and there's Frank swinging. And I went, Frank made me do it. Frank made me <laughs> Really that, cute. I mean, I can only imagine the stories that you do have. I mean. Oh, I did another one. Uh, Al Sachs gave me a Pulsar wristwatch. We're in Vegas. And I'm doing Magnum then. And uh, Bobby Conrad came with me, we went to see Elvis Presley. So Elvis on the stage and he announces Conrad and announces me. I was so impressed that I got introduced by oh, Elvis yeah, Presley. Yeah. But then after the show, uh, somebody comes up and says, you wanted backstage in the, you know, backstage in the green room. Yeah. So we go back and Elvis sits down Conrad sits down, I sit down next to Elvis, of course, and <laughs> he spots my Pulsar watch, which lit up digitally, you know, it would say 718, right, right, 718. Right, 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 yeah. He looks at his eyes, falls up, and he said, what a watch. Can I see that watch? So I said, yeah. So he tries it out. Well, he doesn't want to give it back. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, so uh, Conrad, Conrad says, give him the watch. I can't. He says, well, here. Uh, and he takes one of his rings off to trade me. I said, I can't. Uh, a mobster gave me this watch. How are you killed? Conrad said, 
give him the watch or you're going to be dead right here. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I wouldn't give him the watch. It was Al Saxon's. And Elvis got really upset. And he took the watch off, threw it in my lap, oh, and wow. walked away in a huff. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time at Elvis and Sweet 3000 at the International Years, you know, when he first went to them with, with Kirk Kerkorian. No, but there's, a, there's another maniac, man. Woo! Yeah. We were watching a cowboy movie up there, and the sun was coming up. And when he got mustered out, everybody must know that knows Elvis, they gave him two gold plated 45s from the military. Pistols, yeah. Yeah. So now he tur he turns over the couch. There's couches all over the living room. And they're having a gun battle with real bullets shooting up the walls. But he didn't realize my guys that I was always around without mentioning names. You met a couple of them. We all had guns, too, because we were allowed to. So we all took out the guns. So we're all shooting over each other's head, but you could still get hurt. Oh, my God. You had to pulverize that room. We, I mean, thank God we were on the top floor. Unless we were to kill somebody. We were on the Sweet 3000 was on the roof of the International on Paradise. But talk about spontaneity is there. I mean, like you say, you get these guys going, but they're like little kids if you say no to them. And Sinatra's definitely that way. I mean, forget about it. You know, I'll tell you another story. Um, I was with Nancy, then not married. And Frank had really hearts and flowers for Nancy. So we're in the top suite at the Caesars Palace. And he says to Paulie, remember Paulie Terracino? Oh, yeah, I love He died, I heard, just recently. Yeah, he did. God what bless a nice guy. Yeah. But I caught him. And Frank says to Paul, Paulie, why didn't you go and get a bunch of pizzas? And he winks, and I caught it. And he says, Larry, go with him so he doesn't have trouble carrying him. You know, so he says, Nancy, come on, sit here. Larry's going to go get pizzas. I went, not on your life. No <laughs> way. Not on your life. I and Jilly, Jilly Rizzo said, I'll go get the pizzas. Frank gave him the dirtiest look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's another thing about Frank. Frank moves on people's wives, man. I can't believe it. I saw that a hundred times. Yeah, I mean it's that's I mean that's talk about no respect at all. Yeah, well, yeah, you met Nancy in in Vegas, though, didn't you? I won. Did you meet Nancy in Vegas? I met Nancy at Robert Conrad's home, and I went there to do something I don't remember what, and I looked at her, and she was there visiting Conrad's daughter, and I looked at her and I said. Oh, my God. Because Nancy was an actress in Miss California and the whole regime. Right, right, right. And, you know, I went up to her and said, hi. And she said, buzz off. She was a <laughs> That's tough her. Nice. <laughs> she's but still, anyway, it she worked still out. She still has that attitude. I love it. How's your, son, how's your son? Who Lorenzo's writing. Uh, my son Lorenzo's writing movie trailers. I oh, know. That's the trailers you see in the theaters about the up and coming stuff. So that took a big load off of me. As you know, you got sons. So oh my God, yeah. Always worry about them. Yeah, I got I got nine sons now and 10 grandsons. I can't believe it. Oh my God, you got- And two listen, daughters. You got a baseball team and a basketball team. Well, they, they can't all play together. My oldest is 59 <laughs> and my youngest- 59, wow. <laughs> Imagine that, I can't yeah. believe it. But I, oh. I but, I mean, anything is possible. Oh, hello. It's you, you know, look where we lived. Hello, there's craziness. Yeah, it's it, it, but you know, as I sit here just reflecting with you now, and you know, it's like we just were just hanging out last week. I mean, that's who we were and are still today. It, it's it's crazy, but the, well, look, Gianni, you gotta work at friendship. I'm telling everybody this, because if you don't, you won't have any friends. Oh, no. Friendship no. is a tough thing. You have squabbles. But if you're stupid enough to have a squabble and tell someone, drop that and you don't talk to them anymore, 
Shame on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because friends really become closer than your brothers. Oh, as you get older. Yeah, because you, you can't pick your relatives. Your friends no. have a choice, too, and if they're choosing you also, there's a mutual there right in itself. But you and I always had a, you know, as as things went on and we, we without getting mentioning names, I had to back off a little because of I was told to because of the attention of a couple of brothers, but it really hurt me, but there was nothing I could do. I got that out of New York, and I was working very heavy in New York. <laughs> So we, we, you know, we all go through that, and fortunately now here I sit, and I'm, I'm so happy to call you my friend and a good friend, and all those people are gone, man. Like you're saying, if you have a good friend, it's and, and like 50 years we're friends. Is that that's, that's who could say that? And, and and the experiences and the fun we've had. We really didn't have any problems, you and I. It was the people around us and situations that were created that made us make have to make decisions, unfortunately. You know, a great scholar once said, and I mean years ago, said if you have five friends that you can count on your fingers when you die, you're a lucky man. I believe that. Yeah, think about it. Do you people out there have five friends that you could say these this is a person that I could call in desperation? Yeah, you know, that that's the other problem. A friend in need, as they said, is a pest. And a lot yeah. of people a lot of, a lot of people think that. But a yeah, friend in friend, need that's friend, when you know he's really a friend. Yeah, but friend, some some people take advantage of that. You know, and that's creep. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I never borrowed money from you and you never borrowed money from no. me. I think that's and, the worst thing you could do to a friend. No, you don't ask. The, that's how you lose a friend. Right. Because, and so many people, I mean, I've lent money to people and lost friends. Never so saw I them know. again. That's right. Yeah. I, anyway. I, I, I've used that line a couple of times saying, listen, I really like you as a friend. If I lend you the money, you're never going to talk to me again. <laughs> and they, yeah, well, and they hung up on me anyway. <laughs> it's, you know, Selleck, if someone asks him for money, he'll say, here's 500 bucks. That's it. It's a gift. Oh, yeah. And, well, yeah, but they don't see, you don't see that guy anyway. No. But, so, I mean, Selleck, I'm, I can only imagine how much money he has. The guy never stops working. Oh. You know, and Steve Sherrill. He Sheriff, lives on a big ranch. He's, he's a very quiet man, very personal man. Loves his wife, loves his daughter, Hannah. Well, uh, you know, I had the privilege, as you remember or don't remember, his wife produced a movie that I was in. And I was with, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, James Colburn. James Colburn and I started. I, we, James Colburn was a priest in the beginning of it, and I was a woman, and we were both assassins, and we were at a wedding, and Tom Selleck was on the set a lot, and his wife wrote and directed it for Universal. Do you remember? Oh. Do you remember that movie? It was a big movie. No, I don't, but I, I'll find it. That sounds like a neat, cool movie, and you know. If you if you don't like Selleck, you don't like people. No, Selleck is a... I, I know everybody that works with him because Steve Sharippa, who was my doorman during... Yeah, the, I know him. Well, during State Street, you know, he was my doorman. He was at the yeah. club that night I shot that guy. And then he, so, went on, he went on, as you know, to be Sopranos, and now he's on that show. Now he, he's years. on the Selleck show. I know, 11 years. I love it. Jeez, that's unbelievable. No. And you know what? He has the same assistant uh, that he had on Magnum, same assistant on Blue Blood. That's, uh, that's so that's smart. Many years. But that's the kind of guy he is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything else. And if, if not, if they, that means they must have died or something because he, he's, yeah. he seems like that loyal person. You remember you had a guy around called Dippy Zitz. 
Where the heck? It was years ago. Dippy Zitz, he, and he came from New York. He was around just a little while. I think he got rid of him. He was just a real nut. Yeah, but Dippy Zitz. Well, a lot of guys used to call me and say, John, a friend of mine's coming out. Look after him out there. As you've gotten those calls too from Chicago. And then they sent some maniac out of here, and you say, what, are you crazy? Get him out of here. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. And by the way, folks, you're wondering what kind of cigar this is. Yeah, what it's is called this? the Lico Produta. It's a very, very special cigar. I know, Gianni, you hate smoking. You don't smoke no, your don't whole smoke life. The only the reason ones I, that, I, 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 people you know, that do will like these. But you know, the bottom line... When I built that last house right that, right down the block from you uh, in uh, Woodland Hills, the, the architect let me put it, he said, you gotta have a smoke room in there. I said, I don't smoke. And he talked me into it. And even though I, he put all the ventilation in and everything else, I always smelt the cigars. It just, it, I have something with smoke, I guess. I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, if you're, not, if you're a non-smoker, you're yeah. a smoke hater. And I remember that house in that gated estate. That house was amazing. We had a, a Bentley then, too. Yeah, I had a couple then. <laughs> a Ferrari. <Yeah. laughs> Those were the days, uh, baby. But remember we used to meet on Fridays at the um, Monty's? Yeah, Monty's restaurant, steakhouse, still there. I know. And Michael that family's Luke. been there forever, too. Yeah, but God almighty, we used to get polluted. And, but, but it was a good thing on Friday afternoons we'd meet there at three or four o'clock. They'd rope off one corner, but not to be name droppers. But everybody used to come by. Frankie Avalon, yeah, John Aston. Remember John Aston? Oh yeah, he hello. He was a great Hollywood. actor. I liked him. What was that? The Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, he, that and, was a good uh, actor. Yeah. You used to cook a lot when we were at the apartment. Oh yeah. And you taught me how to make fettuccine Alfredo. Alfredo. That's right. And I made it for my father. He picked it up. The bowl came with it. It was mortar. <laughs> well, you didn't make it right, obviously. <laughs> Johnny, if it's okay, I want to go out and put my car away. Are we done? We, we are, we're we never done. I appreciate what you We're done. finished. We're finished. Washed up through. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I love, love you, you buddy. I love seeing Nancy, and God bless you, man. And thank you for this. I'll give you the air dates on it. And uh, yeah. I can't thank you enough. It's It's been... God, God bless you, folks. And let's hope that this world straightens out. Keep safe and keep those masks on. And buy your book. Uh -oh. give, me, give me the title one more time. The book that I wrote is called Aloha Magnum, LarryManetti.com. All right, please. Larry, thank, thank you. you so much, my man. I love you. Bye, John. Bye. Bye. Love you. Good Loves night. and hugs. I right, please. That's it. Thank you. And now the end is near. It's time to face the final curtain, my friend. I'll see it clear I'll state my case On which I am certain I've lived Thank you for tuning in to the Hollywood Godfather podcast. Email Gianni Russo with your questions, comments, and for information regarding his motivational speaking appearances to Gianni at HollywoodGodfatherPodcast.com Email Patrick Picciarelli with your questions and comments to Patrick at HollywoodGodfatherPodcast.com and visit Amazon.com for a listing of books he has written. I'm Megan Horan. I can be emailed at Megan at HollywoodGodfatherPodcast.com and would enjoy hearing from you. Be sure to leave us a review on iTunes. We'd like to know what you like about what we're doing, what you'd like to hear in the future, and anything else you might suggest to improve our podcast. But most importantly, hit the subscribe button. We'll be back next week with stories of the mob and Hollywood, as well as answers to your emails. Good night. Along the byway But more Much more than this I did it my Way Oh there were times I'm sure you knew 
When I've been off More than I can chew But through it all When there were doubt I ate it up And spit it out And I stood tall And through it all I did it my way I've loved I've laughed and cried I've had my share My fill of losing And now As tears subside I find it all So amusing To think I did all that And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he is not to say the things you truly feel. And not the words of one who kneels The record shows I took the blows And did it my way Today's show is being sponsored by Cordelione Fine Italian Food Products. This sponsor really means a lot to me. Cordelione Fine Italian has taken the heart and soul of the Godfather films and created a line of food products that include pasta sauce, balsamic vinegar from Modena, Italy, Genco extra virgin olive oil from Sicily. They created delicious pasta sauces, marinade, tomato basil, arrabbiato, and my favorite, Clemenza's meat sauce. You will be amazed. You will think your grandmother made the sauce herself. CorleoneBuyingItalian.com. That's CorleoneBuyingItalian.com. It was a very good year It was a very good year For small town girls And soft summer nights We'd hide from the light On the village green I did it my 